Hey, we're about to uh, talk to Michael Scott. Um, he's a director of the, the film called The Horse Boy, and uh, that's a, a, a one Sundance uh, film festival in, in 2009, and I, I think it'll be really exciting to hear what he has to say about his experiences with the Bushmen of the Kalahari and talking about uh, our return trip down there uh, with Nicola Pellian and myself, and I'll also be meeting up with filmmaker Craig Foster down there because we're looking into some uh, old cultural practices that help strengthen nature connection and seeing how some of that might inform us back here at home. So let's see what Michael has to say. All right, well, uh, Michael, super, and um, thanks for taking time with us today. I, I like to talk about, with, with respect to Coyote's Guide, um, we, we have the last chapter of that book, and it's, it's called Coyote in Context, and it, it talks about the mentoring skills that build really strong nature connection ability, like the Bushmen have. I mean, obviously the Bushmen are, are held up as some of the highest practitioners of nature connection. You know, they're, they're our, our, our legends, our, our all-stars, and uh, we look to them a lot for the, the, the characteristics that they have as trackers, as practitioners of, of skills that keep them alive in the bush, and a lot of other things. And, and a lot of people have referenced their incredible natural history knowledge and understanding, their deep nature connection. And um, I, I write about the fact that we take coyote mentoring, we put it in a book, and it's you know talking about how you as a mentor can move an individual on a journey. Uh, but we talk about the need for the community as a context for that journey. And I wondered if you could, you know, say anything about cultural practices that you saw the Bushmen engaging in, just sort of as a, a matter of everyday life. Mm -hmm. Well, they're, they're always working on something, you know. I mean, even if they're just lounging, you know, in the shade, they're, they're generally, you know, twisting uh, some cordage or, you know, working on a necklace. And, um, you know, it's, it's their form of meditation. It's their form of relaxing. It's their form of... Uh, you know, working on something that's their particular role within the community while they're, you know, having their time to just be around each other and, you know, communicate and talk about, you know, really actually, I mean, what they do more than anything else is just, you know, chat. They love to chat. They love to be, you know, kind of goofy with each other and um, to have their leisure time. And like I said, you know, you know, they, they do a lot of uh, necklaces. They do a lot of, um, you know, cooking together. They do a lot of um, uh, building of, of bows and instruments. And um, I think, you know, I mean, I think we all know that these particular skills um, and the way that we use them to fill a role within our community is 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 kind of like a niche. It gives us a certain identity. And um, you know, yeah, I certainly saw that they kind of wove those skills together as they communicated, as they relaxed, as they. Um, you know, just kind of went about their daily lives. Nice. Did you see anything in, in the realm of greeting customs when you were there? As far as just traditional greetings, um, yeah, I mean, you know, to be honest, I, I can't think of anything in particular besides just a, a really friendly smile and a, and a, and a handshake. Um, but one thing that is amazing is that, you know, it really didn't matter, um, you know, that they didn't know us. Uh, you know, as soon as we, we dropped into the community, uh, it was as if, you know, we had been friends for, for a long time. It was, um, you know, just the intimate engagement that they have with, with everybody within the community as well as outsiders is, is really impressive. Mm, yeah, that would, be, that would be a greeting custom unto itself, just a welcoming, right. you know, a truly yeah. welcoming feeling. So that's, that's yeah. excellent. Absolutely. Um, well, I have, I have well, one last question for you, and then... Um, you know, anything you'd like to say, but, um, you know, let you, let, leave it up to you. But I wanted to ask you about uh, what you would hope to achieve when we go back down there. Because my, my particular objective to go and visit the, these communities again is to get out there with them a little bit and see especially how the little ones are, are worked with by the elders uh, in, in reference to their nature connection journey. Because uh, I know that without deep nature connection, the Bushman c culture can't regenerate and you know, it would be difficult for them to survive without deep nature connection in, in the challenging environment that they live in. Um, yeah. What would you hope to achieve on this on this trip with us, uh, you know, in coming spring? Well, personally, I'd love to, to learn, you know, from them skills-wise. I'd love to learn um, some more of their tracking and, um, you know, craftsmanship. Um, something that I've been thinking a lot about lately um, is that the Bushmen you know, 
they're, they're one of the oldest cultures on the earth. You know, some say that they are the oldest culture on the earth. And what's really interesting to me is that they have come in contact with, um, with outsiders for thousands of years. And they've been oppressed. They've been, um, you know, ravaged. Um, they've had their rights taken away and given back to them and then taken away. And um, what I find interesting is that they still are able to keep this core group of individuals who are really dedicated to living the lifestyle that their ancestors lived um, thousands and thousands of years ago. And so one thing that I'm really interested in, interested in um, kind of documenting is what is it about their culture um, that allows them to have this, this core of stability, um, you know, despite the fact that you know, for thousands of years, people have been coming up, coming to them and telling them to change and trying to force them to change. Mm. Um, you know, and how can, you know, the knowledge and wisdom of, you know, past cultures, how can that inform, you know, the present state of society? Right. Um, you know, because that's what's so interesting about them is that it's not that they resist change. You know, it's that they try, incorpor- try to incorporate, um, you know, the past as well as they can, the things about the past that work for them with, you know, the present and with the future. And um, so I'm, I'm really interested in that because clearly, you know, that could hold a lot of information that we could use, you know, today, you know, right. in, in all cultures and all societies around the world. Exactly. And, you know, and for the, for the viewer, like the, the thing I like to, to point out in what Michael's saying is that, you know, people think, oh, it's not appropriate to, you know, to take cultural items from others and, and bring them forward. But in this case, it's, it's not done in, in that spirit. In this case, I want you to think about something like a hand drill for starting a fire without matches or, you know, carving a bow, you know, if you like, if you like archery or making baskets. You know, this kind of technology is, is shared and traded openly all around the world uh, among different cultures from every walk of life. And, you know, something like a greeting custom, you know, just knowing that giving a warm and friendly welcoming greeting is something that really helps people feel ready to engage and ready to open up. So, you know, it can help you. You don't have to use a Bushman greeting custom, certainly, uh, but you can use uh, a simple greeting custom and to make sure that when you are running a program that's based on nature connection, that you take the time to greet people and welcome them and make them feel genuinely welcomed and learn how to do that yourself because that'll help the people that you're working with open up and engage. So it's in that spirit. You know, what are the things that we can learn from these people who are still practicing deep nature connection at the deepest level that we know of on this planet right now? Um, and learn from them, you know, what tools really work for them to regenerate nature connection from generation to generation. Because we're going to need to put a lot of those back because our culture has lost them uh, many generations ago. A lot of these tools and, and, they're, and they're in the distant, you know, inklings of our memory. But that's about it. And, and people are really hungry for this right now. Um, you know, look at the popularity of the movie Avatar. You know, it's a great example of a story of returning to indigenous roots and, you know, what, that, what that's teaching us. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. Is there anything you'd like to say to everybody? Um, well, to the people who are, you know, watching this, uh, if you get an opportunity to come on the trip or um, experience some of the um, the media that we bring back from it, um, you know, uh, I hope you enjoy. And uh, you know, I think it's going to be a really amazing experience. You know, I know that the the one time, you know, like I said, that I that I went, it really was a life changing experience. And so um, I very much look forward to it again. Thank you. And, um, yeah, hopefully see you on the trip or afterwards. Great. Well, thanks very much, Michael. And uh, please look up his documentary, too, which won, won at Sundance uh, called The Horse Boy Film, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, The Horse Boy. All right. Super, Michael. Thanks again. Nice yeah, to, thank you, John. Nice, nice to meet you on you. Skype. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. All, All right. right. Well, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Great. Take care. Bye. That's kind of cool, huh? All right. Here, up on the front cover, you see the Bushman featured. Um, you know, we really, really respect what Michael just had to say about the Bushmen, you know, some of the nicest people he's ever met. Um, that welcoming feeling he gets from being there and among the Bushmen, this is uh, not the first person to say this. It talks about the importance of understanding the cultural tools, that if people feel welcome, respected, honored, invited, they shine. And we got to remember that as teachers, educators, mentors of all kinds. Um, we are very excited about the webinar uh, tools that we're going to offer you that will uh, help you gain access to all the tools and unlock the power that's within this book, as well as um, uh, be able to go beyond what's in this book here. Uh, great presentation material for the families that you work with, uh, for the communities you serve. And remember, um, this book's coming to you for free for being part of this prog- program here. And if you, 
If you sign up for uh, this webinar, you get this book mailed to you, as well as free shipping, and the first 100 people are going to get it signed. And I know this is going to be a great, great project, and we're very excited to share this with you, and I can't wait to see you there. So thank you very much.